All right, let's get started. Welcome and thanks for attending the Tire Washes Choosing, Specifying and Using. I'm Dave Jenkins, Certified Professional in Erosion and Sediment Control. Uh, this Lunch and Learn is sponsored by the Pacific Northwest Chapter of the International Erosion Control Association. And it will be recorded and posted on our YouTube page, which is linked to from our um, webpage at PNW. Oops, this is wrong. PNWC IECA. So Pacific Northwest Chapter IECA, PNWC IECA.org. Um, depending on how many people we have attending, uh, we might be able to just use the chat function and uh, answer questions as we go, or we can wait till the end. Although I can't, I can't remember if I had set up the uh, chat function for everybody. So we'll see how that goes. In any case, um, any questions that you have, you can email to me. Uh, our email is also at that web address of PNWCIECA. So with that, let's get started. So I found an ancient proverb on the internet, and so I know it's true. Uh, and ancient. So clean tires track no sediment. So keep that in mind as we as we progress through here. A little bit of ancient history. Um, I worked at the port for 22 years, both at the seaport and airport, uh, SeaTac International. Most of the work I did was at SeaTac and the lessons learned that I'm going to talk about in this presentation um, directly are directly related with to that work at SeaTac International. And uh, before I move from this picture, you can see the airport is surrounded by people. It's also surrounded by creeks. So all drainage from the airport eventually ends up in a creek. Um, most of them are fairly small. So any amount of stuff going in the creek is not a good thing. All right, in particular, lessons learned came from the run up to building the third runway at SeaTac International Airport. Uh, work started oh, 20 years ago. It was complete and uh, landing jets in 2009. So this is a fairly early picture of that looking south. Um, I think the total cubic yardage we brought in was something like 18 to 20,000 cubic yards. Um, we were running trucks sometimes 20 hours a day, six days a week, four months at a time. Uh, we ran all seasons at least twice. So big project. And again, these lessons learned are mainly from this project. So first lesson learned was, um, who knew that sediment on the road means sediment in the runoff? This is an example. Uh, this is a proje different project, but um, Sweeper has been running constantly on this project and we still have 3,600 NTU water draining to a catch basin. Another thing we learned was conventional BMPs have limited value for reducing, eliminating, preventing track out from construction projects, especially in the wet months. So things like rock or um, in this case, a uh, grizzly. So if the sediment is wet and gets on the tires, it's going to track out, cause track out. So um, somebody has their mic open if they wouldn't mind closing that, appreciate it. Unless you have a question and just jump right in. So I'm not saying that conventional BMPs are bad, but if you're only relying on them, you're going to have track out. Um, so using them in conjunction uh, with other things or several conventional BMPs together, and I'll talk about all of this, those, that can work. Sweeping in itself is inefficient and ineffective, as I showed in that earlier picture with the turbid, turbid water going in the catch basin. However, uh, it is a necessary BMP 
um, and and specifically vacuum sweepers, not the broom sweepers. Another conventional is a tire bath, which is basically a just a pond or puddle of water that your vehicles drive through. Uh, problem with these is they they work. They will take sediment off tires. And of course, the sediment drops out to the bottom and sits there. So the tr next truck is going to drag out sediment from the bottom of the tire bath, as you see here. Uh, in fact, the color of the asphalt in the background there, it looks pretty, pretty light tan. Uh, that is a buildup of this fine sediment after you know, truck after truck, hundreds of trucks. So tire baths um, have limited value on large, excuse me, on large projects. Hosing of tires, uh, also limited value uh, on a large project. It can work on small projects, but um, problem with hosing. Um, could somebody go on mute, please? Thank you. Um, so hosing is, is an inefficient um, way to manage sediment from a project. And related to that, we learned that we learned all about process water. What is process water? So water that's used in a process like washing trucks, hosing tires, things like that is uh, in uh, Washington. And I, I assume in the United States, I don't know about Canada, uh, process water is regulated separately from stormwater or groundwater. And specifically with wheel wash water, it's contaminated. So you can't mix it with storm water. You can't infiltrate it, uh, let it sit on site or anything like that. So let me, somebody's got a question here. Oh, okay, yeah, somebody mentioned at least you only pay for hosing the days that you're hauling, um, which is true. Um, but again, if you have a large project, it's, it's not a good way to go. So, but it does bring up a good point about cost of tire washes in particular, which I'll get into. Okay, so process water. Uh, you don't wanna commingle it. It has to be handled as contaminated. So if you use a tire wash, you have to, uh, or any, any water in this process, uh, legally you have to collect it. You would have to profile it and dispose of it offsite in a legal, legally uh, uh, permitted facility. All right, permits tend to not be useful in telling you or guiding you how to manage sediment track out. Um, in Washington, and I'm sure other states, the Construction Stormwater General Permit says to minimize sediment track out using conventional BMPs like rock. So permit tells you to minimize. And what does that mean to a contractor? Uh, does it mean, you know, is this minimized? This one probably isn't because there are no BMPs, but maybe this is minimized or this one or this one, all of which when it rains will generate turbid water, turbid runoff that may and most likely will exceed the uh, discharge requirements. So then the question is, do you need a tire wash? Well, maybe not. Um, it may be possible to prevent sediment from getting on the tires in the first place, back to the ancient proverb, clean tires track no sediment. So this is something to consider uh, whatever your role is with a project, if you're an inspector, if you're a CECL uh, out on site, if you are a regulator and offering suggestions, but even better, if you're a designer, um, try to design this into a project if possible. So in this case, the trucks are being loaded out, they're staying on the asphalt and the loader is getting dirty. Okay, I'll give you a few project examples. This is a project that's going on right now at the Port of Seattle. Uh, this is last year's work, but it's a 
riverbank habitat restoration involving removal of about, I think, 10 or 12,000 cubic yards of soil to regrade the slope and build uh, intertidal habitat. It's the access is on uh, neighbor's property, not Port of Seattle property. The Port of Seattle owns the little strip there on the river. And unfortunately, the neighbor has a stormwater swale along that property edge uh, that we have to cross. And of course, their stormwater discharges are regulated, so we can't have anything going in there. This would have been uh, potentially a candidate for a tire wash, but there's no way we could do it. So what we ended up doing is placing steel plates over plastic across um, a section of the swale for trucks to back in. They stay on the steel plates, get loaded, and then drive out. Uh, just a little backstory. The contractor delivered these plates. They'd been sitting out in their dirty yard for ages, who knows how long, and they came in dirty. Um, so that's not a good thing. And in fact, I sent one load back, told them to bring it back clean. But regardless, um, plates need to be clean and stay clean if, you're, if you can do this. And I do recommend any opportunity to use plates, um, plywood. I've seen plywood used uh, for limited, unlimited projects. So anything to keep your tires clean is good. So here's the project after excavation. You can see where the plates were here in this just right of center. Uh, and then the slope has been, so three to one slopes, regraded, planted, blanketed, uh, the sandy, uh, not a mud flat, sand flat here uh, was created with the woody debris and such. So that's what it, no, it's all grown in now, actually. Another project, this is uh, earlier this year, I believe, a uh, small project, you can see a failed bulkhead lower center of the project. Um, can this be done without a tire wash? Well, it's a small project, I hope so. Uh, the key is something like this, you wanna schedule it for dry weather, uh, but also you wanna, you know, you wanna figure out how you can do this. So th this is what was pulled out. I don't remember how many yards, it wasn't a huge project, um, but rather than have, have trucks drive in, these containers were moved. So rather than having trucks drive in, load out and drive out, it was the same thing. Place steel plates, trucks back in, uh, soil has been stockpiled to drain, and then it's loaded in the trucks and they drive off and no track out. So just look for these kinds of opportunities whenever you can. Another example, this is quite a few years ago. Uh, this was a, a large project for the FAA out at the airport. And it was designed to, uh, with the idea that trucks are gonna stay on gravel and then asphalt. So first thing they did once, uh, well, actually first thing they did after they cleared was they placed gravel. Trucks came in this entrance, uh, drove in a ways, got loaded out. It was 200,000 yards that was taken out um, and then drove back out on the gravel. This was summer work, uh, which was perfect. And then as soon as they could, they put the first lift of asphalt. So you notice the little one inch lip here. So this is first lift of asphalt. When they're done with all the, ex, uh, the uh, construction, then they put the final lift on. Uh, somebody didn't get the message to stay on the asphalt back here and they drove on the dirt. So, uh, and, and actually, let me just talk about that for a second. Um, one of the things about one of the best ways to prevent track out is site management. So, you know, one of the, one of the 13 uh, things to do to follow in a stormwater permit is to manage your site. This is where that comes in, is to make sure all the employees know where they can go, where they can't go. Uh, another example of that, this was a, we had to build a warehouse and we had to do a preload. So we had to build up a pile of dirt and cover it up over winter to compact before we could build. So this is, uh, I guess this is probably the spring after the, um, after we preloaded. But you see there's no vehicles out here other than the actual equipment. 
the employees are parking elsewhere. So up here on the right or to the top of the picture on another piece of property that's uh, asphalted. So things are limited that way. Uh, another example of placing gravel, this is gonna be a asphalt parking lot, but first thing, they first, uh, first chance they got, they covered it with uh, crushed rock. So again, anything that you can think of to prevent track out in the first place. So you don't need to have a tire wash or, you know, a lot of other BMPs um, try to try to fit things into your project like that. So with that, do you still need a tire wash? Uh, maybe. And so how do you decide if you need one? Well, you need to assess your, assess your risk. So are you going to have a lot of trucking? Are you going to be working in winter? Uh, what kind of soil type? Do you have do you have a lot of silts and clays in there that once they get wet they're sticky and they stay on your tires and in your treads and sidewalls um, are you exiting directly from your project onto a, a road surface you know public road for example uh, or do you have a long run out before you get to a road where is the water discharging um, where your trucks are exiting is it going to a wetland? Is it going to a creek? Is it going to a pond? And is it is it a contaminated site? And I would say if it's a contaminated site, that's a the bell goes off. Use a tire wash. So here is what the third runway construction looked like. Um, I think all the fill is done at this point. Now it's just getting ready to start installing um, taxiways and the third runway. So you can see it's a large project. I was, I don't know, five, 600 acres, uh, again, surrounded by creeks. So assessing the risk on this, all of the risks, all the boxes except for contaminated were checked on this one. So yes, we need a tire wash. So yes, as I said, we need a tire wash. Once you've decided that, then you need to consider some additional things. So I already mentioned the process water. Uh, consider drippage from the truck once it goes through a tire wash. What do you, you know, where's that water going to go? Cleaning out a tire wash, uh, the cost of the whole, uh, the, the whole operation. So installing, removing, rental cost, maintenance. Um, are you going to assign a laborer to manage this thing? Um, and then disposal of the, anything that you've cleaned out of it again is going to be contaminated. So all of this needs to be considered if you're going to have a tire wash in your project. Now, I'm going to talk more about specs later, but I just want to mention this comes up quite a bit um, in general, that you have to spec a tire wash. You can't expect the contractor to just do it. And this applies possibly more on private construction rather than public works. Um, maybe both, but I think in private. Um, you have to spec it. It's just, it's too big a deal. It's too, uh, it's too, excuse me, too much of a potential cost here. And um, the contractor needs to be able to bid it properly. So just, I, I, I would keep that in mind. Along with the specs, uh, you need to design it into the project. So in this case, we're showing where the tire wash is gonna be. We're showing a stabilized entrance out, out of the tire wash. So the tire wash is gonna go up in this area here, the top of the entrance or the top of the rock, rock out. And then this is showing fence on both sides to keep people from shortcutting and dirtying up the, the rock exit. So um, it was not installed exactly this way, but this is enough information for the contractor to bid uh, in addition to the specs. So then you can work with the contractor on the actual location, what makes sense, um, what's going to work best. So uh, another thing we learned is tire rotations. Once you want to, once you decide you do need a tire wash, one of the first things to consider, and this will help you choose which is the right one, the more tire rotations through the water, the better. So this is a one tire rotation, tire wash uh, with flush nozzles on the sides. So this particular one um, is, is useful. We've used it a lot, but 
it does have limitations. You don't want to put this on a project that has trucks running 20 hours a day, six days a week. Uh, in this case, it's being used almost as a polishing step. Um, once vehicles get to it, they've been running on asphalt for quite a ways. So there's really not much left on the tires. But again, uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but I will. Um, the, the Port of Seattle has very strict specifications on track out. This is a two tire, uh, two tire rotation, tire wash. This is being used on a contaminated site. Um, and I highly recommend this type of tire wash if you do have a large project, a winter project, contaminated project. So the tire wash on the right, lots of nozzles. Um, it's, it does have a polymer injection system to minimize, or excuse me, reduce the amount of sediment in the water. Uh, it's got the tank for settling, and then this thing sticking up on the end is um, a wiper system. So uh, the wiper blades, the rubber blades, like um, uh, what do you, what are the mud flaps, drag along the bottom and bring the sediment up and then drop it into a bin at the end of the tank. So these are very useful and effective. Uh, highly recommend these. And then this is a six tire rotation tire wash that was built uh, by one of the contractors specifically for the third runway construction. So, and I'll touch on this a little bit more. This, this actually has everything that you want to have in a tire wash. In addition to the tire wash, you need to consider uh, various enhancements to make them work even better. So, um, the exit side of your tire wash, you uh, asphalt would be best even if it's temporary and you're going to rip it out and recycle it. Uh, rock is good, you know, quarry spalls. Um, anything that's not going to add dirt after the tires are washed and leaving. Uh, speed bumps can be helpful for uh, bumping off. Uh, well, I mentioned the drippage earlier. So just bumping the truck so more water drops off before it leaves your site. Edge fencing I showed on the, that design drawing. I'll show some examples of that to keep people from shortcutting across the exit. Um, things, putting a sign up that all vehicles exit through the tire wash, um, regardless of what size or who it is. And, uh, you know, in your safety tailgate, same thing, let everybody know. Nobody bypasses the tire wash if you're leaving the site. And if it's justified and it has been on several projects that I've been on, having a dedicated operator. Let's see, uh, somebody mentioned the soaker, that one tire rotation um, tire wash I showed does not have one tire rotation in the wets, true. The jets are only eight feet of wet zone with rumble strip extension, no water. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, that's, that is, yeah, you're right. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay. So enhancements. So here's just a, an example of one of those. This is the entrance into the tire wash. It's not complete and running yet. So they've installed asphalt and the asphalt actually is uh, installed to drain water back into the tire wash. And then it's bermed on the edges for uh, drip uh, overspray and things like that. It'll all drain back. Same system on the other side, uh, on the exit side. And then, uh, so asphalt, rock, and then onto existing asphalt on the exit. On the, in, the um, inside, the rock will be built up. They've just placed the asphalt, so the rock will be built up, trucks will come in. Um, so yeah, here's the fencing. This isn't a tire wash situation, but this is an example of what I'm talking about. Um, this person didn't want people coming in and driving out on the mud on their lot, so they've directed people. Uh, that come to visit where to uh, where to drive and where to park. But same thing on the tire wash. If you had a tire wash back up here in the site, uh, this is perfect. This is a perfect example. Tire wash up here, vehicles are leaving, they go through the tire wash and they drive straight out onto a road. Location is important. So here's another one of the soaker tire washes. Uh, when I took this picture, I thought, no, this needs to be closer to the road. But actually, this morning, I was realizing, no, it's that's not necessarily true. 
Um, the location here might not be wrong, but this is wrong. So in this case, since they are locating the tire wash back in the site, um, they need to keep people from driving across. They need to have a maintained solid uh, exit that's not adding dirt to uh, cl clean tires that may be coming out of this the tire wash. So this could be good. And actually, a long, the longer the run out after a tire wash, the better. You get more, more stuff dripping off before you leave the site. So this needs fence. This needs a better exit. Uh, another example, and I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not picking on these guys. Um, these are very useful tire washes in the right situation. So here, um, I think it's a good location. They have an inside. They have an outside. Uh, the color of the rock tells me they're not cleaning the water out enough, but there's asphalt on the backside and they at least tried to rock the uh, exit side, um, which could work, but does need to be maintained. And here's one that's uh, near and dear. This is a Port of Seattle project. Um, and contractor, well, the spec said to use a two tire rotation tire wash. And for some reason, the contractor brought a single rotation out and they were uh, reminded that you have to have two, two rotations. So they brought another one out. So these, this is a back-to-back -back two system tire wash, uh, which actually was very effective. So they had tried, they asked if they could try, try using just conventional BMPs and, uh, they were told, you know, yeah, you know, we're kind of skeptical, but sure, give it a shot. We, we know where this is going, but sure, give it a shot. And uh, this is what they ended up with. I think they might have actually ended up paving the exit at some point. Uh, just a side note, this is preparing to install that tire wash. Uh, with, with most tire washes, you do have to dig them in for, uh, for them to work for drainage and such. So when you locate them, uh, they, you do have to keep that in mind that you're gonna have to do some digging. So utility locates and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's talk specs. And I am gonna go over, so I hope you guys can stay. So some things to consider uh, in writing your specs um, now. Port of Seattle has a spec that requires no visible track out. So we don't use the minimize, it's no visible. If we can see it, it's track out, you can't do it. Uh, we have found that it is possible to meet that, uh, but it does take diligence. And uh, yeah, it takes a lot of diligence, it is possible. I don't necessarily recommend that anybody else do it. Uh, the Port of Seattle has both a internal environmental program and a construction management program and everybody is trained on this and it's beat beaten into everybody that if you see track out uh, get it stopped so uh, if you don't have that possible possibility of having people out on a site all the time uh, it's probably not a good idea to go for that anyway uh, in your specs i would recommend two tire rotations put it in the spec system uh, shall provide two tire rotations. And actually based on that comment earlier, that probably should be changed to two wet tire rotations or something like that. Uh, specified nozzles, did somebody want to say something there? Okay. Uh, specified nozzles, you want to have nozzles everywhere. The more nozzles, the better. You want to have nozzles pointing at sidewalls, uh, inside the sidewalls of both duels, uh, up into the treads, mud flaps. Um, so you wanna have them pointing everywhere. Uh, you want the system generally to be a high pressure, low volume system. So th the opposite of that would be the soaker, which is a, a low, low pressure, high volume. It's got flush nozzles. And then consider a, a polymer add-on. A lot of the tire washes have a an additional unit that can be added that injects polymer to keep the turbidity down. So in general, um, you wanna set a standard that's biddable and enforceable. Of course, minimize is not biddable and not enforceable. So, and when writing a spec for this, 
uh, you know, you have to think of something that's that the contractor can get a hold of and go, yeah, okay, I need to do this or that and bid it properly. Um, yeah, thank you, Ben. So nozzle patterns should cover all tread and sidewall for a full to two tire rotations of the tire. So actually that would be a good spec. Contractors shall provide tire wash uh, that includes the nozzle pattern should cover that shall cover all tread and sidewall for the full two tire rotations. Oh yeah, another good one. Thanks, Troy. Um, all nozzles shall be in operation. So these are, these are uh, folks that have, have had to deal with tire washes before. All right, so let me, uh, so the port specs currently say, I won't read the whole thing, but at no time shall mud, debris, or visible sediment be allowed outside of the project boundaries, et cetera. So that is the standard. Now, what that does, and this is a personal thing, when I write specs, I tend to write them really stringent with the idea that I can always back off from it, but if I don't write it, you know, if I write it too loose, uh, there's no way I'm gonna be able to tighten it up without having to pay additional cost. So um, I write it strict, the contractor bids it, the money's in there, and then I can work with them. You know, if they're, if they're doing the best they can and there's still some stuff out, I might say, okay, you're fine. You know, I'll back you up if anybody says anything. If they're not even trying, then I've got that hammer of, um, you need to keep adding until you get to no visible. So here's another um, material. This is a material spec in uh, for the port. Excuse me, I got another chat. Terminology of high pressure and low volume are subjective. It yes, it is. It's very problematic for a spec. Um, although it, how do I say it? It does separate, it does provide separation of a certain type of tire wash. So um, what I found is having the high pressure, low volume has kept the contractor from bringing on uh, certain tire washes that wouldn't be appropriate on the project. But yes, more specific is better in a, in a, a contract spec. Okay, so wheel wash shall be high, high water pressure, low vol, uh, water volume system long enough to allow for at least two full tire rotations, should be two wet tire rotations. Uh, spray nozzles directed at inner and outer sidewalls for all tires, including duals, blah, blah, blah. Uh, another one that I've seen, I didn't write this one. This was a consultant uh, wrote this one on a, um, contaminated project, which I thought actually was nice. It's a good performance spec and, and it worked. Uh, tire wash system has met the performance criteria when there is no mud at the paved or stabilized exit of the wash system and the tires and undercarriage of trucks and equipment is visibly clean. Um, so this actually worked. Um, it's probably a little bit looser than, than I would like, but, but it did work. So the previous specs are, um, uh, oh, geez, my mind is blank. So this is a performance. What's the other kind of spec? Uh, anyway, somebody, somebody put it in the chat. So we've got performance specs and we have the other kind of specs. And then don't forget to, uh, you know, it's, well, here's some other things that you might uh, consider putting in a spec. Prescriptive. Thanks, Ben. So prescriptive specs, you're telling the contractor exactly what you want. And then performance, you're telling them what you expect to see as a result. So, okay, other things to consider. Um, and this goes back to the preventive. We have written in contracts that haul trucks shall stay on asphalt at all times, but only in projects where, where we know that's possible. So, uh, manage the site, contractor shall install a gravel employee parking area, uh, which we've done. Vacuum sweeper during haul operations, contractor shall continuously sweep haul road with a vacuum sweeper. And this is an airport thing um, because of foreign object debris. We can't have anything on taxiways or runways. So 
when we do any kind of construction at the airport, there's a vacuum sweeper going at all times, whether you see anything on the pavement or not. Uh, another thing to consider is how often to replace the water. And this actually is important when you're specking a tire wash. You need The contractor needs to know what your expectation is because there's a cost to this. Um, it could be a big cost. If you have a really dirty site with a lot of trucking, uh, you may have to replace the water every couple of days. Um, might be once a week. So you've got to give them something to bid. Um, of course, if you get it wrong, you're going to get a change order. But you can't just you can't really just leave it to the contractor. It can be a big cost hit. So keep that in mind. Um, for any of you that might be regulators, it's a similar situation. I don't know how you would possibly do this. I've never been in a regulatory mode, so I don't know. But a lot of regulations are written probably by lawyers for lawyers and don't necessarily consider the realities in, in the real world or in the field. So when a when a regula regulation says minimize track out, it has no meaning in a contract, has no meaning to a contractor or construction people. So any way that regulators can um, include really solid enforceable standards that the contractor uh, can do with no surprises and has no subjectivity, uh, that would be optimum. Again, I don't know how that, I don't know how you would do that. Um, some poss well, let's some possibilities. Uh, regulatory compliance might mean you could say no visible sediment, although that could be problematic for in a regulatory uh, arena, I'm sure, uh, or something. No mud, I don't know. One that I thought of not too long ago, actually, though, is the runoff. Um, you know, requirement to test for turbidity or TSS at the point of discharge in the street. You know, say 100 feet. Um, up road and down road on either direction from the tire wash or the construction exit. Um, that would be enforceable. That would be biddable. Um, your NT, you know, your turbidity cannot exceed this or that um, at the nearest catch basin downstream of your exit. So just some ideas. Uh, yeah, there we go. Just just what I said. And then for inspectors, uh, what are you looking for? Well, this is, so this is a pedestrian walkway across a road about 300 feet with 300 feet of asphalt from the tire wash exit. Uh, would you say that the tire wash is being cleaned enough? And uh, you can answer or not, that's, let's see. Oh, from Dan, okay. Uh, let me just jump to the chat here real quick. So the NPDS permit for Washington State requires less than 250 uh, NTU discharge. So sample when it discharges to CBs and ask for a cart, all known, available and reasonable technology. So yeah, that's a good one too. Actually, that's a very good one. So it's not something I've personally seen. You know, mostly uh, what I've seen is people, when they think of discharges from a construction site related to the NPDS permit, it's stormwater runoff, um, not turbidity. So, nope, not by my specs. Okay, I, I don't, Troy, I don't know what that means. We, sh we probably should chat later. Okay, so this is an example. And actually, I have done this on projects at the airport. I've had the contractor paint a white stripe at some distance past their uh, tire wash so that they, you know, it's a, it's a visible, it's a visual for them. It's like, if this is dirty, then do something about it. So another one is, this is another way you can tell that a tire wash is not being cleaned enough. Um, if you drive through a tire wash and when the water dries on your window, it looks like this. Um, there's a problem. So approaching the end here, uh, I think. So this was the first tire wash that was the contractor constructed for the third runway. And I'll give you a 
visual. So to the left is the third runway construction. Um, this is the tire wash here. It's 120 feet long. It drains into a ditch system with lots of check dams and then drains down below into a three cell pond, lined pond. So everything is contained. I don't think we used polymer in this one. Um, and then we had, in addition to that, so the tire wash is down here, kind of lower right center. We had a quarter mile of run out before we got on the freeway. So that's how that tire wash was managed. And you can see dirty, dirty, dirty to the left. And then we built another tire wash a year or two after the first one uh, toward the south end of the project. And this was, this was the Primo. So this had everything. Uh, on really bad days, they, uh, the contractor assigned a laborer to hose off the really nasty stuff. Uh, truck drivers were instructed to lift their beds so that the spray nozzles could get up underneath. Um, lots of nozzles everywhere. You can see we had the, the bumpies here. So we had two, two or three uh, one inch tubes and then a one and a half or two inch tube. So trucks had trucks were bouncing through this thing as they were going. Uh, another another shot showing the at least the side nozzles. There's also a zillion nozzles up underneath. And then on belly dump trailers, the drivers had been instructed to open the dump as they go through for the same reason. Uh, dirt gets left up inside. And when it's raining, especially uh, dirty water drains out. So this was to clean out the inside of the hopper as much as possible. So th these are all, um, these last two things are really part of the project management approach to this is uh, making, you know, and, and actually this was an adaptive management. We learned this as we progressed. We weren't doing this uh, for quite a while on the project and the light went on for somebody. It's like, hey, we've got to, we got to do better. We've got to, what can we do? And somebody said, hey, let's lift the beds and open the, the dumps. So, and then here's speed bumps on the way out to bounce off some of the water and everything is drain, drained or uh, designed so that water drains back eventually into the holding pond for the tire wash water that is using polymer in this case. So that's, uh, that's what I've got. Uh, anybody have any questions? You can turn on your, your mics if you want. We don't have a lot of folks here or just go ahead and put something in the chat. Um, turn on your mics unless I forgot to allow that in the, when I set the meeting up. So any- Hey Dave, Dan yeah. Bennett. Dan Bennett, how's it going? Long time no see, lots of great nostalgic pictures there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and an impressive job the port does of keeping the roads clean. I'm jealous of what you can get your contractors to do. Well, it's- you know, yeah, you know our system. So, and like I said, I wouldn't try to recommend it to anybody else. The way our system is set up is kind of different. So I would speak in favor of the hoses, just, you know, my situation, y'all, I'm working at yeah. Sound Transit and we have like, I think about 54 miles of open construction right now and hundreds of construction exits. And so when, when you can't build one of these, I mean, first of all, a lot of the new administrative orders are requiring us to have construction exits or uh, tire washes, the real ones uh -huh. where there's contamination. But otherwise, I find like water buffaloes and pressure washers and hope maybe a water truck, you know, uh -huh. if you can get it to inspire people to do it. And so even when we spec these great big truck washes, you end up with these other entrances where, you know, how I'm not saying you need to twist people's arms, but how can you get people to do it when it's not black and white? is to sample, you know, even at 25 NTU, you, you sort of have a case to yeah. say, hey, step it up and you can step yeah. it up yeah. bit by bit. And I also like those FOD plates, the big yellow pl plastic bumpy plates to get them to hose things off on because then you can hose the mud back off it and have a clean work surface. That's oh, kind of yeah. been working for us. Are those the, uh, those the yellow plastic? 
Yeah. So, um, so we're, we're like limited room. room it's like a place. Place. Um, I'm sorry, somebody somebody jumped in. What what were you gonna say? I uh, just wanted to mention that yeah, they, the the FODs mat, it's a brand name, but uh, they are kind of a cool little alternative to the, the steel rumble plate. Okay. And they are available. Okay. And I, and I like that. I like what you said, Dan, about using them to hose off tires um, as opposed to expecting them to bounce vehicles and bounce stuff off. So, so I think, I think everything you said is, is a good idea. And I have, I have seen some of those before, like the water Buffalo. Um, so very good. Anything else for anybody? Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. This, uh, you guys have been great and I appreciate you attending. Please go to our website for information on membership with IECA. So pnwciec.org. And uh, thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Dave. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.